What's up guys? We're in New York City again for possibly our last restaurant vlog. Who knows? They don't have outdoor seating here, so I don't know how they're gonna be with me filming my vlog in here on my phone and stuff. Uh, it's called Le Cuckoo, AKA you'd have to be cuckoo to spend this much at a restaurant, but I'm a little late for my reservation. So we'll hop inside guys. Uh, the reason we're here is because one of my lovely viewers that watched one of the first restaurant vlogs uh, suggested this place. And as this subway is, is going by, um, <laughs> you guys are ringing in my ears telling me to use my microphone next time. Last time I wore my microphone, they thought I was like some undercover FBI CIA agent. I got treated really weird or something in the restaurant, so I don't want to do that. I don't want to wear the mic. We might be okay. We're like, we're like dead in the middle of the restaurant, but we'll see. So one of the reasons I wanted to come here was because when this place was opening, which is like seven years ago now, it was actually like when I was kind of starting YouTube, I interviewed here for a position and they really liked me and wanted to hire me but I don't remember exactly what I was doing it would have been a great gig though because I mean this place has been killing it since they opened in uh, 2016 2017 so it's really like been one of the, the more popular restaurants in New York City for, for the whole time they've been open so last time we went out you guys know I had beer I thought about it on the live stream the other day, you know, with the beer, you don't know what type of water they're using to brew the hops. They do have cider. From, look, chances are, like, is a cider from France, are they gonna use tap water? No, it's probably not. So that's like a safe bet. It really depends on where the beer is from. Like if it's a United States beer like this stuff, I'd be worried about it. Belgian beer, I probably wouldn't worry as much about the quality of the water they're using. For the wines, the champagnes, all that stuff, you know 100% it's made from the juice of the grape. So from like a health perspective, it's a much safer bet. It's kind of special. Last day in New York, well, last week in New York, kind of. And champagne usually makes me sick, but I think we'll go for it. We'll have that to start. So when I looked online, the menu is actually the same as what they have now. And there wasn't really a lot of stuff I could have. You guys know we don't do the seafood, we don't do the shellfish for the most part. So oysters are out. This is just leeks with hazelnuts, which might be okay, but I might not like it. A lot of the like the pickled vegetables and stuff, I'm usually not a fan of. Foie gras, very fatty. Tuna, eh, it might not be that bad. But we try to stay away from the, the fish with the metals and the mercury and stuff. This is okay. Although I usually try not to have beef when I go out because I'm eating beef all day. They put caviar on it, so they got a pretty heavy upcharge on there. Eel is super fatty fish, usually polluted. Lobster, more fish. No, none of these look that great besides the tartare for our diet. More fish. More fish, very fatty too. This is more foie gras, so very fatty. And then we have sweet bread. So this is what I was looking at. Might be like the only okay thing which is just like veal organs which are usually very mild so from like a dietary safety point of view the sweet breads are probably the best bet and you know what maybe the tatar is even safer but we'll see maybe we'll get that and for the entrees they did have a few things that did work uh, sea bass is lean finned fish so it's probably okay compared to the shellfish and the fattier fish that are more polluted lobster want to avoid the shellfish Halibut, probably okay. Dover sole, probably okay too. So we can do that. Rabbit's very lean. We can do that too if we wanted to. I think this is lamb, which is fatty. Hey, I'll have the... Um, this, the second... The gas is okay? Uh, hold on. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, where were we? Yeah, so the lamb is kind of fatty. Duck is kind of fatty, and I don't want to have beef. And this bone marrow, all that stuff is probably really fatty too, so. I'm thinking Dover Sole. Sweetbreads and Dover Sole, or maybe. Yeah, because I mean, I really want to try the tartare and the sweetbreads, and then do the Dover Sole, but I don't know, it might be a lot of food. The thing is, like, I don't know how each of these dishes is composed. So you probably have to like come one day, try the sea bass, try the halibut, try the Dover sole, see what they come with. If this is just brown butter on the side, it's just a lot of protein. Daikon is usually okay, but 
I'm not sure how much I'll like that. See, there's crayfish vinaigrette, green tomato, and mint. That doesn't sound like it's uh, starchy, so a lot of flavonoids might not be that good. And then the rest of the stuff is either really fatty. I don't know what they normally put in this. If it's like a tomato or really fatty based stew, then it might not be that good, or it could be really good, so we'll see. But honestly, like, with how busy this place is always and the prices on the menu, they must be printing fucking money, but, um, like, super fan. I honestly, I wore a long sleeve shirt because I don't really want to wear a t-shirt, but I probably would have been fine. Yeah, so, like, two weeks ago, I was going to film a vlog at a different place, but what ended up happening was they wouldn't give me a seat at the table, and I was sitting at the bar. I didn't really, you know, feel as comfortable at the bar doing this as I would so it's just like dead in the middle of the restaurant kind of kind of busy but not like crazy busy and you know like when you're kind of like sitting on a bar stool you don't feel that comfortable and to put my phone down on the bar instead of the table was just wasn't the best idea so even though I brought my mic down and stuff two weeks ago I decided not to film that dinner uh, but I will say that uh, they, they treated me kind of weird when I had um, when I had the microphone on my neck, even like though I didn't have my camera and wasn't filming anything, like none of the staff really wanted to talk to me. And, sh and that's probably what it's gonna be here too because I got my fucking phone out vlogging in the middle of the restaurant, which they don't seem to care about. I think they would have said something already. But no, I got treated like an FBI agent when I wore the microphone. At least like with the phone and stuff, they kind of know what you're doing. Like they think you might be like a restaurant reviewer or you're like filming a vlog or something. Uh, so they got Pellegrino. And then we got champagne. Bro, when I open my own place and I'm charging $50 for a glass of champagne, we're going to have uh, full water selection, full water selection, whatever you want. Bro, it's a little dark in here. We got a candle, though. Can you guys see the candle? Yeah, you guys can see the candle. I mean, I mean, they're pretty on top of stuff. You probably need a reservation to, to be here, and it's like Sunday night, so that's why they might have been open. But, like, I couldn't reserve for one person, and they don't have a bar. So I just reserved for two and put in the notes on the reservation that I wanted one. But they got back to me really quick and said that's fine, so it's on top of it. Bro, honestly, if I worked here, instead of starting my bullshit business, I would have probably had way more fucking money. Honestly, at this point in time. Because that was seven years ago, dude. Seven years of this? Eh, it would have been close. But I wouldn't have the business. Go figure. I don't really like getting people on camera and stuff for the privacy. I love to show you that the restaurant's beautiful. It's like an open kitchen, so you can like see all the cooks and stuff. Like, like you could literally take 20 feet and walk into the kitchen. There's not even like a, a bar or something separating it. It's just an open walkway. And, I'm surprised they don't have more chefs in here. This would have been a really nice restaurant to work at. It's like, it's not too big. It's kind of quiet. They got a lot of staff. It would, it would have been nice. It would have been nice. Bro, this is going to be... The champagne's 40. One, two. Bro, this is going to be like $300 in it, which... I don't really care. Honestly, hemorrhaging money at this point. Yeah, so we got the, the tartare with the caviar. She convinced me. We got the sweetbreads with the mushrooms and then the Dover sole. So, honestly, it's like really protein heavy, which I'm not as much of a fan of, but um, she said they serve bread, so maybe it's not as good. That's how like a lot of like a lot of like super expensive fancy restaurants in New York. When you look at the menus, they're just heavily protein based. That, that kind of justifies like the pricing on stuff. You know, you're not gonna have like a lot of starch, a lot of rice and stuff like that, but they could have done some side dishes. So the, the prefix menu is, I think it's 195, where the chef just chooses what you want. But I mean, we wouldn't want to do that because we're like really picky with dietary restrictions. So they actually brought like three hors d'oeuvres 
which are complementary what the chef is doing. And I, I don't want to have one. One was an oyster. Don't really want to do. Um, one was like a, some type of like crepe pancake thing with uh, buckwheat and fish in it, and then they had like a fried onion with anchovy. I mean. Honestly, it would have probably been okay if I was gonna have it, but like, like with how my stomach has been the past few weeks, I've just been like really, really safe with um, with the diet and stuff. I don't know, like with having one small oyster and a little anchovy and stuff really ruin it. Yeah. Considering I chose like the rest of the foods to be really strict, I don't know. All right, guys, what what constitutes a twenty-five dollar bottle of cider? Gray sparkling berry cider. I mean, it does taste like a twenty-five dollar glass of cider. If we're being honest. Things. Um, yeah, no, I'm just kind of, I just have like a few diet things, I don't, I don't want to have a fish. No fish? You understand that the, the soul No, no, like, I can't do, I can't do patty fish. No like the anchovies, fish. like the anchovies and that, the okay. stuff they had, the soul, you're gonna, you're gonna the soul be, is fine. You're going to be okay with the sweet breads? Yeah, that's fine too, I know what that is. With the sweet breads and the cream? Yeah, 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 cream. yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. okay with caviar? Yeah, the caviar is fine. Okay. I just didn't want the the oyster and the yeah. anchovy and stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Are you interested in this uh, white asparagus velouté? That's okay. Yeah. Can I try it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a cream in it, but it's not super good. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were really nice. They sent me something else. Uh, I'll show you guys. All right, so this is white asparagus velouté, which I'm assuming is white asparagus with cream mostly. And then... I could have done without the green stuff on top, but that's fine. And then they do have bread and butter, which we'll try. I mean, they 100% think I'm some like restaurant viewer, which I'm not. So we'll just push the green stuff to the side. So this is actually. This is similar to the VC Swa recipe that I was going to show you guys if um, if potatoes weren't seasoned. It's very good. It's probably asparagus blended up with some like leeks and cream and it's served cold. They seasoned it really good. It's very good. Yeah, so I was doing uh, Vichy Swa, which is like potato leek soup for lunch, instead of just regular mashed potatoes. And um, the russet potatoes are like out of season. Like, I've been, it's like every supermarket in New York, I could only find like Yukon gold potatoes and red potatoes, which aren't as good. You can just leave it, thank you, that's fine. The bread is a classic French baguette, so it's really dry and crunchy, which I'm not always a fan of, but it's definitely fresh. And the butter is warm room temperature, so. But this, um, this is like one of my favorite things. I like because there's so much cream in it, which isn't always the, the best on my diet. So this is small because it's an app, and since like the bread is so crunchy and they grilled it, now this is like a lot. This is a lot of fucking protein. So we got the caviar on top, and because this wasn't like super crazy expensive, it's probably just like a lower grade of caviar. And we got the quail egg on top and the tartare. So I usually try not to do too much dairy and eggs, but like one tiny quail egg is okay. 
I was, I was honestly curious because, you know, if you're going to charge $90 for a big car car, I really don't know how I feel about combining caviar with tartare. <laughs> Definitely getting B vitamins and omega 3. Of the caviar. I don't think it's an Ocetra caviar though, so not the biggest fan. So we got bread and butter with too much caviar. <laughs> Honestly, at least it's not like a crazy amount of red meat, like a lot of having eight ounces of beef tartar. The bread and butter is pretty good. The waitress said this wasn't a lot of food, but I'm not gonna. Fin There's no way I'm gonna finish that Dover sole without feeling like a stuffed pig. No way. No way. Between the champagne, the amount of cream in that balute, and this bread and butter and caviar, I'm already fucking full. Because I don't, I don't normally eat a lot of fat in my diet, so when I do it, it fills me up so fast. I should probably save some room since this is a. $90 steak tartare. I'll try to finish it. I'll have one more of the, of the cider, yeah. That's the, um, I need one of those, man. That's the biggest crumb scraper I've ever seen. The reason I got that tartare was I thought it was going to be like a small amount of like expensive caviar, but it ended up being like a larger amount of less. Of so. I don't really like I don't really like filming unless I'm like in the corner or something or like outside at a table by myself. Like when I'm in the middle of the restaurant and there's like seven servers around me at all times, I feel like you know I'm increasing the pressure a little bit. All right, so they brought us the veal street breads, which is probably veal stock cream uh, with my taki mushrooms. They look like they caramelized them really nice in the pan. And here we have the street breads. Now, we've had sweet breads on Frankie Strange Wheat for God knows how long. Honestly, they might get the sweet breads from the same place we get the sweet breads, but I've never actually had them in like a restaurant preparation it's always been some like crazy carnivore raw pancreas nonsense but if you guys are unfamiliar the sweet breads aka pancreas are very famous culinary delicacy it's very good this is our right food I'm gonna be so full if they bring me that over So, I mean, this lived up to expectations 100%. They must have like grinded or seasoned it really well. Nice caramelization in the pan. Small amount of cream sauce. There, there's a reason this place is so busy 
despite being so expensive. The chef's really good, they're really consistent. I mean, the dish has everything. It's a balance of, you know, they got the salt, the fat, acidity, there's some wine in there, aromatic, it's very, very good. This is like one of the best things I've had, period, in New York restaurants. Just from a taste perspective. Bro, I'm so full. I'd be the, the carbonation, the champagne, and the cider. So we had the velouté, the white asparagus velouté, tartare with caviar, and I'm struggling on these sweet breads. I'm debating on asking them to not bring the Dover soul. Because I'm so fucking full. I'm gonna vomit. Like, <laughs> 100%. I'm gonna tell her because there's no way I can eat that. There's no way. Yeah, I'm so full. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna vomit if I eat it. I'll, I'll have another one and I'll see the dessert menu, but there's no way I can eat that. Yeah, that Rideau is very rich, right? The what? The Rideau is very rich. The soup rest? No, I mean there's a lot of there's a lot of cream in that white asparagus thing, uh -huh. and then the butter on the bread with the caviar is so much. Okay. I feel yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll let the chef know, and then I'll take a look, bring the dessert. Yeah, I'll take a look at the dessert. The, the cider. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Look, maybe maybe if I get the the dessert or no, maybe if I got the Dover so I could eat like half of it, but I'd be fucking sick. You know, I literally asked the waitress, like, is it a lot of food? Bro, three ounces of caviar. This fucking takes you a week to digest. It's whatever. So I, I wanted to show you guys the Dover sole because I think I was talking about it in the last vlog. It's a flat fish. It's expensive because they have to use the whole fish. But it's, it's really rich. Nice texture, good flavor, doesn't taste fishy at all. And then traditional preparations with ground butter and capers, it's very, very good. If you don't like fish, Dover Sole is definitely a go-to, but it's always like, any restaurant you go to is gonna be like 70, 80, $90. And you have to go to like a fancy French place and it's not that common. The other stuff like the, the black bass, I mean, ha halibut is the same. Halibut is usually the whole fish too. I don't like it as much as the sole, but bro. Maybe we'll have to come back one day and show you guys the Dover sole. We'll have to come back and do what I wanted to do, the, the sweet bread and the Dover sole, and then show you guys. The tartar, the tartar, tartar was better. Tartar better. All right, until I find a French girlfriend, I don't know what any of the stuff is. It sounds like some type of sorbet, citron, lime sugar. Milfi, which is like the, the thin pastry with a lot of ice cream, so we don't want that because it's ice cream, a lot of dairy and eggs. Ananas roti. This sounds like a, a rum cake, which we had last time. It was way too, too much alcohol. Chocolate tart, dark chocolate custard. We'll be awake for about four weeks. Marjolaine, hazelnut, duck on ice cream. We'll see what that is. We definitely don't need cheese though. So, um, so most of the dessert, like too much butter or cream or something, it's all like dairy and eggs. But the, the first one, which I don't really want, we'll try it. The problem is, I think they're even the rum cake dude, when they do passion fruit and certain fruits, have a very high like carotene and flavonoid content which isn't good for the liver and also they can be very high in oxalate so honestly if it's not like apple or lemon or pear eat pineapple's okay too coconut's okay but if there's anything else in the dessert there's gonna be so many issues with it just the regular conventional dairy is not too bad sometimes but the, the conventional eggs are very inflammatory which they tend to put in a lot of stuff 
So I want to avoid the eggs 100%. And look, if you just have a little bit of milk, cream, and butter, it's not the end of the world. It's just the chicken eggs, especially what what they inject and jab the chickens with, and all the corn and soy in the feed. It's, it's just so bad for you. I try to avoid eggs at all costs. The sherbet, even though that's what we got, I'm concerned that they just use the New York City tap water to make it. So my brain might turn off for a day or two. But it's usually pretty tough. Again, dude, Bouchon, was it Boucherie? Boucherie that had the that coconut cream dessert. That's like, I mean, that's not even, even though it has ingredients that we can have on this diet, it's still very high in fat, so it's not that great. Bro, imagine, imagine getting blasted on $24 bottles of cider. Well, the only, the only scenario is you should have like three different pregnant Asian chicks dining, dining with you. One Korean to show that like you can get the prettiest Asian girls, the Koreans. One Japanese to show that you can get the most stuck up Asian girls, the Japanese ones. And then three, the Chinese to show that like you were able to convince some Chinese billionaire to get you his beautiful daughter. So literally, maybe even a fourth or maybe even fourth or fifth dude, because the Southeast Asian ones aren't as hard. So that was fast. This is our lime sherbet and some coconut something cookies. Well, my hands aren't that big, but <laughs> I'm fucking losing it. The only, the only reason I didn't really want to get this dessert was because it, it said lime sherbet. I don't really like lime. What is it? I'm fucking... Bro, this is two bites for 15 bucks. Yeah, at least... At least I'm paying to not have eight ounces of fluoride in my brain, only two. Look, I, I like it. It's, it's fancy, bro. Three spoons of sorbet for 15 bucks. Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> Guys, it's literally like one tablespoon of sorbet. You guys know, like, like limes are small. It's like half of a lime to look for back. Kind of funny. You know what I'm thinking of doing? I mean, I'm moving, but when I was tanning in Central Park, there were all these guys walking around selling, like, you know, Gatorade, Powerade, water, trying to make a few dollars. I bet if you got like some. Thank you so much. Get All right, thank you. Honey mother lens. Okay. Say lemon mm -hmm. Dessert round two. Chocolate. Are you also? I'm sorry. You I'm also done. I'm all done. Yeah, thank sorry you. We got dessert round two. He said honey lemon something macaroon. Madeline's, or yeah, Madeline's macaroon. Oh, this is. Bro, imagine how much celebrity pussy I would have got working here. As soon as I pull my pants down, even though I'm not that tall, as soon as I pull my pants down, fucking game over. Game over. This is chocolate, like some type of chocolate fudge. And uh, with my better judgment, <laughs> this is, guys, this is, this on my fingers is not what we're doing later tonight, because I'm a gentleman. And I will not be eating the chocolate because I feel like sleeping for the next week. However, I will have the white macaron. It's very good. Sweet. A lot of acidity from the lemon. Balanced. Some cream in there. This is like fried, almost like beignets fried, a little bit of powdered sugar. 
Very good. In order to be able to payroll a chef that has his shit together, you gotta charge this much for the food. Rush your life. Well, I feel like if you're making this much money from charging these prices in a restaurant, you have some like 20 year old Chinese girls polishing the floor every night. Although these were probably fried in vegetable seed oil, maybe not. Because I didn't see on the menu anything that could have been in vegetable seed oil. And we do need some starch and sugar to balance this meal out. Calm down. I am down. All right, boys, you placing any bets? I'm betting. I'll go with what we said earlier. Three thirty for dinner. Fucking crack, fucking crack down my mind. Maybe, maybe when I have all my businesses up and running, I'll eat here. I'll eat here every night. I'm gonna have to have the meat business, the foods, the organ supplements. Oh, dude, I'm gonna have to fucking. Eat. Dude, I'll, I'll be having one Asian girl of every ethnicity working for me by the time I can afford to eat here every night. So we'll see how that goes. Honestly, it's not that bad. What would be bad is if you took a girl with you here, bro, you'd be fucking. You'd be crying, bro. You would be bad if you took a girl here and spent like <laughs> and spent like seven hundred dollars on one dinner. You'd be crying to her for like, um, for her mom. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Dude, you, you would be crying to her for her sister and her mom to come home with you that night and have a foursome for how much money you spent on fucking dinner, dude. This fucking, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's this. Maybe it's a special occasion thing, dude. Maybe it's a special occasion thing. Next time I come here, I'm gonna be wearing just my underwear and a t-shirt because for how much I'm gonna fucking pay? I, sh I, I, I have to sell my clothes, dude. Thank you. This is the nicest check presenter I've ever seen. You guys complained I showed you my card number last time, so let's not do that. Oh, not that bad. Not as bad as I... Yo, look at this thing. You can fucking, you can put your balls in this after they send you the check to replicate how you feel when you get it. <laughs> you guys fucking. I will say, bro, they got the, the good ink gel prints, so they're on top of their stuff to some degree, but. <laughs> oh my god, this reminds me of how much money that HVAC Honduran cocksucker stole from me, so go figure. And, and this was with, well, to be fair, if we got the Dover Soul instead of the the Tartar, it would have been the same price anyway. So this is accurate. We were accurate. We bet. What did we bet? Three hundred thirty dollars. Nice. Plus tip. Bro, I'm listening. They got their own cuckoo music. It's saying cuckoo in the music lyrics, and there's fucking four different private toilets I can take my ugly ass girlfriend into. This is what I expect when I spend four hundred dollars on dinner, and they're all vacant too. All the bathrooms are empty because everyone is busy shitting. <laughs> All the bathrooms are empty because everyone is busy shitting their pants at how much they just spent on dinner. You guys hear the music? I'm surprised there's no bathroom attendant. I feel like I need to take another $20 out of my wallet and hand it to someone at this point. And also, where where is my gold-plated condom? to take home my ugly ass gold digger wife after I said right, I'll stop you hear that cuckoo? you're cuckoo alright listen this is giving me inspiration because if I can open a restaurant in New York City and make $300 every cover I'll have enough soup kitchens in the world to feed every single fucking homeless person that's ever existed you know what bro fuck waiting tables here that bartender has no seats at his bar. I wonder if he's in the tip pool. Because if all he's doing is just standing there looking pretty, making drinks for the restaurant, 
I don't know, man. I, it doesn't seem like the type of place that's going to have, like, a huge crowd of people standing there at the bar. Maybe he's probably not in the tip pool, so. That'd be a cheesy gig, though, for sure. But, uh, I guess that's it. Hey, look, you get what you pay for, dude. Are we placing any bets? You guys think they put two ounces of fluoridated water in that sherbet? Either way, it makes sense because if I paid $15 for two ounces of sherbet, I'm paying for the decency of them not to poison me with eight ounces of sherbet full of fluoride. It's only two. I mean, it's mostly older crowd in that restaurant. Some, um, I guess in their 30s, some very pretty girls there. Um... Definitely the best. Well, I wish I'd try the Dover Soul. The sweetbreads was the best dish I've had in New York. So I would, I mean, dude, fucking $330. I, I don't know if the the beer and shit was overpriced. Because I'm, I'm not, like, I used to work in restaurants. But I was never 100% familiar with the, the pricing of champagne and stuff. So maybe, like, the cider and the... The champagne was a little overpriced. I'm not sure. Because one glass of champagne was like $42. And then... Yes, it's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. The cider was 25 I feel like those should be half the fucking price. So maybe the alcohol was why it was so expensive. We could, we should have just got the Dover Soul. And, well, we did get the Dover Soul. But we couldn't... I canceled the order. Because I couldn't... I wasn't going to be able to eat it. Sweetbreads were fucking amazing. Delicious. The bread was okay. They're just classic French baguette, nothing special. Butter was fresh, which is good. They're consistent. Butter was good from temperature, whatever. I didn't try it on its own. The tartare with the caviar. It's like dumb, dumb thing to do. If, if they had a more expensive caviar and just put a little bit on there, maybe I would have liked it more. But when, when you got grain-fed beef, no matter how much you season it, it's not gonna be uh it's not gonna be that good the, the caviar the caviar was just a little too fishy and pungent contrast to the beef but the, the caviar with the tartare together on the bread and butter it, it was pretty tasty if i could come here again with um some blonde girl with huge fucking double e titties for those of you guys that aren't familiar double e the way breast size goes is a b c d e f g implying that an asian girl even exists that has double e titties is a rare occurrence of me coming back to this place to actually have uh the sweet and the dover so who knows who knows maybe some rich russian princess who has a cuckold fetish will hit me up see guys once i got a few drinks of me my brain starts the com the comedy just fucking writes itself right comedy just writes itself I'm surprised I'm surprised as fuck that no one has ever said anything about me having my phone out and vlogging in the bro I'm in the middle of a fucking super expensive fancy restaurant with a hundred people in the restaurant seven servers around me at all time no one said a fucking peep so apparently they don't care that I was filming and shit which is cool I would have been a little more comfortable going into it knowing that I guess that's really it. Some of you guys were like complaining about how overpriced the other restaurants were, but this is. I don't know. You guys look up, look up that alcohol on the fucking, look up that alcohol I bought. I think the alcohol might just be a little overpriced. Cause the, the food, the price on the food actually looked okay. The price on the food was okay. $23 for the, Sweet breads and then 80 for the Dover Soul. That was not unreasonable. But the alcohol was a little fucking crazy. But anyway, I guess that's going to be it, guys. Um, hey, maybe in a few years when we have $100 billion. Look, either way, we're either being doing restaurant vlogs in New York when I have $100 billion. Or we're going to be in some Southeast Asian countries. And you guys are just going to uh, be watching vlogs of me catching venereal diseases. Either way, we're going to have some fun in a few years. But for now, uh, I guess I'm going to go lock myself in this godforsaken fucking warehouse. Because I'm not half a foot fucking taller. With fucking girls lined up outside my front. It's, it's a blessing, guys. It's a blessing. 
If I was fucking 6'2", I would have never had any of these businesses. I would have never got into the health stuff because my liver would have been larger enough to compensate for the poor fucking dietary choices, all that type of stuff. But I don't know. Who the fuck knows at this point? All right, so overall, in this scenario, you get what you pay for. Normally, like, when you're paying twice as much for a restaurant or, like, not restaurant, but when you're paying twice as much for anything, a lot of the time it's only like a small percentage better. You know, there's diminishing returns, but you know, they had hors d'oeuvres, several dishes that they bring in the beginning and they were even kind enough, even after I didn't like the hors d'oeuvres or didn't want the hors d'oeuvres, they sent me first because there's a bunch of like fish in them, fatty fish that I don't like eating. Um, they sent me the white asparagus, which was very delicious, that soup. Um, the service was on point 100%. Then even for dessert, after you order dessert, they bring you some extra accoutrements too. So if you're going to go somewhere for dinner and, you know, you, you're, you're getting what you pay for. And especially if the alcohol here wasn't like, maybe it's not overpriced, but if the alcohol prices were more reasonable, this would actually be, I wouldn't actually be as up in arms about it. But excellent service. The food was very good. The execution is good. I'm sure they're very good. I mean, there's a reason they've been in business for seven years and they're they're still so 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 busy so people have look people in new york have money they choose good places to spend it at, and i guess this is one of them bro every time i comb my hair like this i feel like some hedge fund finance bro i mean honestly i wouldn't mind being a banker if i, if I was better with numbers and financial stuff you know, i could see myself doing that stuff because if the average American citizen is stupid enough to put their money in a market obviously controlled by a bunch of evil fucking sociopaths, maybe they do deserve to lose it. Maybe they... Honestly, how could you possibly think investing your money in the stock market is a good idea? Like, do you understand, like, there are some really crooked fucking people that have been doing this, like, that have the fucking brain for it? Like, maybe you should be a little fucking careful about it, you know?